everybody, it's BC with Gimme Signs, where we help you take your art to your client's hand with your brand. So today we are talking NFTs again, guys. I have been diving deep into the NFT space. I go by Nifty BC in the, uh, the metaverse of NFTs. And I have a project called Morbs. It's M-O-R-B-S dot app. You can go check it out right here if you'd like. And uh, basically it's... Uh, it started off as a series of six characters and it's now evolved. And um, I recently, for the Halloween season, brought in a character for Morbs called Vampa, and I created some packs for him, which sold really well. In fact, the last pack that I released sold out pretty quickly. So um, I've had people ask me, how do you set up the packs? You know, like, what do you do going about it? And I know that there's other tutorials that are out there uh, showing you how to set up the pack but I think it definitely misses uh, some of the uh, strategy to why you're releasing a pack and how it can help your brand grow bigger in the NFT space. So this, first of all, is on the Wax blockchain. This is not on the Ethereum blockchain. Um, Ethereum doesn't have the ability to do the type of things that we can do on Wax. Also, Wax doesn't have gas fees. So you're able to get away with doing a little bit more and giving some more utility to your NFTs without having to take on these huge gas fees. So um, I've used packs. Um, I've been waiting to kind of build packs because I've been kind of strategizing on how to release them and why someone would want to buy those packs. And so this is when I came up with my kind of strategy. So I'm just telling you how I do it. This is not the end all by any means, guys. Everyone has their own strategy. I just, this is the way I approached it. And I'm going to use actually the last Vampaw pack that sold out. It's the Bites and Blood pack, where you basically get an old grandpa. Um, you get three vampire bites, uh, vampire blood in a coffin, and you make a vampire, which is like this senior citizen vampire guy. So he's crotchety, he's old, and he wants to suck your blood. So <laughs> anyway, we're going to help show you kind of how I set it up and why I set it up. Um, and I'm going to do this in three parts. So this part is actually the strategy part, and that's the part that I think sometimes is missing in some of these tutorials. And then I'm actually going to do a third part. Uh, the second part will be the execution, actually how to set it up and the way I set them up. And then the third is going to be the marketing, because that's another part that's really important with all of this in you building your brand in the NFT space. So anyway, let's start off with strategy. So one, come up with a very simple storyline, something that is easy to understand and easy to know why you're buying the pack. So um, as I said, with this certain one that I released, it's called the Bites and Blood Pack. Um, basically in each pack, you get five cards. Those cards consist of one old grandpa card, um, who is uh, Uncle Bob. He went to the local bingo night and on the way back, he got bit by a vampire. So that would be this uh, bite, but it, you have to have three bites to become a vampire. So I included three different uh, bites that come in the pack. So three of the cards are bites. One is the old grandpa. One is a uh, vampire blood. So you need a little bit of vampire blood that, to drink to turn into the vampire. And then you have a coffin to sleep in so that way you can stay alive during the daylight hours. And so that's what comes in the pack. So each pack, sorry, six cards come in each of the packs. And so when you open up the pack, there's a little video that pops up and I'll show you that here in a second. Um, and uh, during that video, um, it goes right into the pack opening, it gives you your six packs. And then you're like, okay, cool, I got these cards, what do I do? This is the second part of the pack opening is that those cards actually are blendable. Now we're also going to be doing a series right after this called blend. So, I'm, and I actually have a video here you can watch to show you how to do a blend. But basically you're taking uh, ingredients, um, kind of think you're in Minecraft or something like that and you're crafting something very similar. So each of the ingredients, which were the ones I told you in the card, so there's the grandpa, the bites, the blood and the coffin. If you blend those together, it creates an actual vampire, which will be one of these guys, and there's five that you can choose from. So you basically get a pack that allows you to choose the rare vampire that you want for your collection. So that's basically was my strategy, was that, that everyone wins. So everyone that opens a pack, you're gonna win something, you're gonna get something you want, and you have choice. So you're gonna get there, you have five choices, you can choose from those five. Then you have one of those vampires, which ties into my other pack, because those other packs, uh, the original Vampaw Council pack, um, comes with five Vampaws in each pack. 
and each of those have different rarities that go all the way up to Supreme. So they have rare, ultra rare, legendary, and then Supreme Leader uh, top is the top, top one. There's only a few of those. And you can blend each of those up. So in other words, if you had all the rares, you can blend those up to the ultra rares. If you have all the ultra rares, you can blend that up to a legendary. If you have all three legendaries, you can blend that up to a Supreme. And so it really creates some gamification for your collectors where they can actually collect these things and get the whole collection if you wanted to. It also makes it better for the secondary market because somebody really wants the entire collection and you have one of the pieces, it makes it more valuable and it makes it more valuable for your collectors. Now, um, another part of the strategy, how many do you release? Well, this is, uh, this is gonna be up to you. It's objectives, guys. I just tend to like to stay within uh, what I believe, I'd be, uh, how do I say this? Be realistic where, where your project is. Um, if you, you're just starting out, you have no Twitter presence, you have no social account, and you don't really have a following, I wouldn't be releasing a 5,000 pack release. I think what you're gonna be doing is sitting on a lot of packs that won't get sold, and it might, uh, it not won't damage your reputation, it just, it just doesn't show any kind of movement. If you're having to sell all of those because you have like maybe a, a guest spot on a podcast or something where you know that a lot of people are gonna be listening and most likely buy, that's a different story. But um, in general, if you're just starting out and you're doing like a release and it's like a thousand packs that are available, um, it might not go so well. So what I tend to do, is, I mean, even me, I've been doing this for a while now, guys. I mean, I only released 55 packs on the first one, okay? And I still have, I think there's like 10 left, I think, somewhere up there um, in the metaverse. If you wanna go pick them up, I'm sure they're still out there on Atomica. Um, or go to my Nefty Blocks. I'll put a link down below. You can go see, I don't know what's left. Um, but the Vampaw packs, you know, they're all gone. And I only put 25 on that. Now, it wasn't because, because I don't think I can sell more, it's just I know that it looks better in the end to sell out at 25 than sell 40 and not sell out. If you can catch my drift. It just, it throws uh, your brand and your entire IP into a more FOMO, a fear of missing out feeling. So if you're selling out, even if you're only releasing 10 at a time, it doesn't matter. If you're selling out consistently, you're gonna become an artist that's, oh, you're selling out, people like your stuff. People like to see the words sold out, um, especially if you're a collector, because it means that your stuff is valuable, it's most likely wanted, and it's most likely gonna be able to trade. And so, um, you gotta kinda of think that way. So think about that more in your strategy, also when you're doing the amount of quantity of these uh, packs that you're releasing. Really what If you're creating like a pack like I'm talking about, like where we're taking a uh, pack that opens up and then you blend that into one final piece. That final piece should be really well done. You know, make sure that that has something that looks like it's more valuable than any of the cards that you're trading in. Um, that's, I think, a really important piece as well. Um, sometimes you can just release a pack where it's just the cards and you're just releasing the cards. That's fine too, guys. Um, I just tend to want to keep the ball rolling and that's where the blends come in because it makes the collector go, oh, okay, let me go out and let me get a blend of this pack to a rare vampire. Then they go to the webpage and realize, oh, I have these other rare vampires. If I just get this other one, I can blend up again to an ultra rare. And so it starts to create that gamification. Hopefully they start to come back and catch on to that. Um, so that's why I would do it if you're doing it this way where we're doing an ingredient pack basically to blend up into another NFT, this strategy will keep people kind of in the loop, okay? Um, we're gonna talk about marketing in the third part of this series, but just as a quick one, if you are not on Twitter, get on Twitter ASAP. That is where everything NFT is happening. It's not happening on Facebook. It's not even happening here on YouTube. Um, it's definitely happening on Twitter is probably the place uh, to start learning about it and projects. And that's where everyone's doing spaces now. You know, instead of Clubhouse, we have Twitter spaces now. And then also get on Discord. Discord is where a lot of projects are happening. This is where you get the inside information, you get the community value, and Telegram as well. Telegram is just, it's more of a preference between Telegram and Discord. Telegram gets a little bit harder because the more people that obviously join your um, community, it makes it harder to keep up with everything because it's just basically one long uh, text stream. So, um, 
definitely check those out, get those set up for your project. And, um, and then we're going to just go over just some basic things really quick on why I was setting up uh, certain ones and we can show you the blend. And then what we're going to do is do part two. Um, actually I'll probably just do this in part two. Um, we're just going to end it probably right here just with the strategy part, because that should be your strategy. Come up with a simple storyline. Um, for me, it was the basic vampire thing. Uh, a human gets bit by a vampire three times. Vampire gives him a little bit of blood and then they give him a coffin to sleep so he doesn't die in the sunlight and you're a vampire. So that was my storyline and that's how I made the cards. So each of the cards had one of those pieces and when you open up the pack, it's gonna give you that and then you can blend it up. So come up with something similar. So thank you for sticking around for this part of the uh, series and part two is gonna be the execution. So we're gonna actually get the cards up there. I'll, you know, I'll get those cards made here in the next day or so and then we'll start to execute this and put this up on uh, Nephi Blocks. And you'll be able to uh, go from there. You'll need a Atomic Hub account and you're gonna need a Nephi Blocks account to do this. So if you're not a whitelisted project yet, you need to get whitelisted to do Nephi Blocks, okay? So um, other than that, let's do this.